Hello everyone, I am Bradley Sward, Associate Professor of Computer Information Systems at the College of DuPage in Glen Ellyn, Illinois. And this video is going to take a look at x86 assembly language and uh, we're going to do an example problem of something you would see in Chapter 5 of the Irvine textbook that I use for the Microprocessor Assembly Language course. So here is the problem we're trying to solve. So in essence, I'm going to be asking the user for a value x, I'm going to be asking the user for a value c, and then I'm going to call a function to do the work of turning x and c into 8x plus c, returning the value back, and then printing off the return value inside of the main. So that's where we're going, and that's what we're trying to do here. Excuse me about that. So here we go. So over here on the left-hand side is the C++ version of everything you just saw here, and everything on the right will be everything we're trying to accomplish. And again, I have the Irvine library set up already. That is a completely different thing if you're not, uh, if you don't already have that installed, but uh, I'm presuming you're already there. So I'm going to start with the main here and go, well, I want to print out some, some different things here. So I want to print out, uh, I'll call it x value, I'll say byte, and I'll just steal this so I don't have to type it out, comma zero, and then if that's the x value, then I got the c value, and that'll be enter value for c, and then I'll call it result. And then, and then that'll be the string down here. There's only three strings that are generated that we're going to use here. And so I already have them kind of worked out. And, we'll, and then we'll fix the rest up here. So let's just print out the three things and then just kind of go from there. So if I can move into the uh, uh, EDX register, the offset of X value, then I can call write string. And I can do this for the other guys too. There's my x value, there's my c value, there is my result. And uh, I can run this. And so, yeah, I mean, it's not perfect by any means yet, but you can see there I printed out enter a value for x, enter a value for c, and then f of x equals. So my three strings are printed. So at least in that regard, you know, I have that already accomplished. Okay, so now just coming back, I need a value for x, I need a value for c, and I need a value for result. And I have these as globals up top here. And so just looking at this, oops, result, I can call it result text instead, just so I have something that is different than the values I need here. So let's see, I'll use xx, and I'll use a, let's say I'm using an int, so it's a sign double word, and then it starts out uninitialized, same with c. And I'm doing this because C by itself is a keyword in assembly language. So I'm just making it a little different here so I don't have to remember. I will forget, but but I'm initializing those three global variables. Un, I'm initializing them. I'm uh, defining them and, uh, and making them uninitialized to start. So there's my XX, there's my CC, there's my result. So coming down to this here, so I say, okay, what am I trying to do with read int? I can call read int right away. And that function will be just like a just like the CN, and, and but it, whatever the input is from the user goes into the EAX register. So to store that for later, I can say take whatever's in the EAX register and move it into XX. And since EAX is a, is a double word quantity and XX is a double word quantity, that should all compile and build just fine. Just to prove it, there it is. Everything's happy. So then the same thing goes now for for doing this for CC. And what's cool about this is the read int, once you hit the enter key, that's your carriage return line feed. So it already kind of works for you here. And you go enter my value for x, here's 11. Enter my value for c, there's my 5. And then we're kind of right there. I hit my breakpoint, I believe, right? Yeah, that's why I hit my breakpoint. That's why the program um, halts up for a minute here. And so we're in a good spot. So the xx variable will hold the value from eax. The cc value will hold this value from eax. So now I have the two parameters I need to pass along to my function. So just kind of thinking ahead here, what do I want to do for my function? I want to set up parameters and say chapter eight in this Irvine textbook, that's where everything gets, you know, everything gets you know, stepped up to 11 here when it comes to the difficulty and how to set up a call stack and do those kind of things, but we don't have that just yet. So our rule right now is to just set up registers with the values that I want them to be. So I want it, let's just say, I'm going to say EAX gets the X value, EBX gets the C value, and then I would call this function that I haven't obviously created yet called equation. And then 
here is EA, whatever gets returned, the EAX value right now is the return value. And so that is the general rule. If, if a function is going to return something, it's going to return it in the EAX register. So, and so move, move, call. Of course, this would not work at the moment. And then call result text. And then, because I want to you know, work out this result here, I could say move, and say just into the EAX register, my result value, call write int. So I know it's like always all these moving parts, always kind of always these things, things that we have to bring together. When do you do part A? When do you do part B? When do you do part C? When do you do part X? You know, it's, it's like I just chose to do this right now because in my head I know that the return value is going to be stored in EAX and I'm going to then move that value because it's I want to store it in that variable. I will store whatever's in EAX and copy it into the result variable. So at, at, at its core here, oh yeah, and then system pause, that's my call uh, wait message. But at the end of the day here, and then we need the exit, that's like the return zero. So then what have I done? Here's my C out, here is, here's the C out, here's the C in, here's the C out, here's the C in. And then now I set up the parameters, here's my X, here's my C to call equation, and then the EAX will hold the result and it'll get stored in result variable. And then I print out the, the string for the result. I print out the result. And then I do, whoop, I need an end line here. Just kind of CRLF. And then I can do the call wait message. So my main is done. And now it's just a matter of filling in the details. The only thing that should go wrong if I did everything else right is just it doesn't know what equation is because I haven't defined that function yet. But otherwise, everything is looking perfect here. So let's, let's push off into that one. So I'm going to write something, well, EAX is an input, that's my X value. EBX is another input, that's my C value. And then EAX will be my output, and that will be equal to uh, 8X plus C, right? That's, that's the goal here, is to print that sort of thing out, or return that sort of value. Okay, so I'm going to call this thing, this thing's called equation, and it's a proc. And then equation NP. I ret out of this. Remember the huge difference again. The main does an exit because you're exiting the entire program. You're telling Windows, this program is done. You know, yeah, let's, you know, I'm done. You can free up all my memory and you can go back to doing other things. As opposed to a return statement that says, hey, I'm done with my function. Return me back to whoever called me. Huge difference. If you put an exit, obviously, if you put an exit here, this program will exit out of the entire program when, when you hit that statement. So you want to make sure you have a return here. Okay, so I'll show you two separate ways to accomplish this. I'll show you the more complicated way, and then I'll show you a simpler way. So for something like this, like I want to return, you know, I, I need an accumulator because I'm some way, oh yeah, part of the rule here, right? This is one of those little caveats here. This is a chapter seven problem is how to do multiplication. And so it's not necessarily the most difficult thing, but you don't have multiplication in your tool belt just yet. So how do we how do we do this without using multiplication? So but what is multiplication but a repeated addition operation? So I can use a loop structure to add eight times over whatever the value of x is and then and go with that. So I can store where should I store this thing? So if I want to do a loop, I have to use a move, and I have to say I want to loop something eight times over. And this is kind of how you get going, right? Like set the ECX register to a value, have yourself a little label to fall back to, and then have a loop. So this thing will loop eight separate times, which is fine, right? So what do I do, right? So but I need this EAX value to hold the result value. So but I already but I'm already using EAX basically as an input. So one way or another, something has to give. So I'm just gonna, just for the sake of this, I'm gonna store. I said this is all. This is just a solution. I'm going to show you a much better one in a couple minutes. Anyway, my this is the EDX register is going to be my accumulator, and then this is going to loop eight times. So then, what do I want to do? I basically just want to add whatever is in EAX and add it to whatever's in EAX. I'm sorry, add whatever's in EAX, which is the X value, and accumulate that and add it again and again and again and again into the EDX register. And so, you know, when I pop out of this thing eight times over, right, because the loop automatically automatically decrements ECX. 
That's just one of the rules. And so when this is, oops, yeah, EAX is the output here. So then when this thing falls out, the ECX register will be zero, but EDX register will hold eight times the value. It's, you know, the eight times the EAX register. So I'm just going to set myself up to return now, and I'm going to move. After I'm done with the loop, I don't need EAX anymore because I've established e, uh, eight times X, and I put that into the EDX register. So I can move that into, move that back into EAX. And then all I have to do here is add whatever EBX is. Because EA, EDX holds 8X, and now that is in the EAX register. And then I add whatever C is, which just happens to be in the EBX register. And so now everything is set forward here. The EAX register holds the correct value, and that gets returned back. So if I do run this, it should just work. 11 and 5 should get me 93. Oops, break point. And there it goes. So 11 and 5 gets me a plus 93. That's just the plus is just there because of the Irvine library, the way that works. So I'm happy with this. This is we're 90, 95% of the way there when it comes to the function, right? We the functionality is there. You could test it again if you want to. Uh, 20 plus 13 should get me what 173, and there it is. And so you know we could test this a lot more, but I'm fairly confident that this is you know doing what we want it to do. So the final step, once you have everything working, the final step is to go back and fulfill the part of your contract where everything that is not an output has to be, every register that is not part of the output has to be put back to its original state. And so what did we modify? We modified EAX, but we were, we're, we're allowed to do that because we said that we're going to blow it out as part of the output. But the EBX register, that actually did not get modified. We, we used it. But we didn't modify it. We only used it to add into whatever was already stored in the EAX register. So I don't have to worry about that. But notice here, ECX register gets changed, EDX register gets changed. This gets added into, and then the loop modifies the ECX register. So my final step here is to do some pushes and pops. And remember the order. So push ECX, push EDX, and then right before I return, I pop everything back. And again, you'll, you won't notice this for a simple example like this. And again, you got to do reverse order. So push first, then pop the same deal, and then pop the ECX because it is a call stack. So again, you won't notice this. There'll be no difference in the output of anything I do here if I bring back 11 and 5 and get my 93 again. It's just a matter of if I went down here afterwards, like this EDX register, since I'm modifying it, oh boy, we'd have a problem if I didn't, if I didn't worry about these kind of things. Because your goal is to only change what you promise to change and leave everything else alone. Clean up your workspace, right? You know, you can make a mess, but once you're done cleaning up and you've got your job done, you got to clean up for the next guy. That's the rule. Um, so that's so one more time here. 11 and 5 gets me 93. And so, as I say, there's nothing wrong with this way of doing things, but let's show a, a cleaner example of how to get this thing done. So I, I can get rid of this guy and bring it all the way back. And so I do have other videos that remember that game Human Resource Machine. I have a, like 13 or 14 videos, the first 13 or 14 or whatever levels. So, you know, it's a great game. It really is an educational game that you can fall back on. And you don't have, you're learning assembly language, but you're doing it in more fun in a more simple manner. And it's kind of, you know, teaching you and there's a stupid story and all that kind of stuff. So I highly recommend, this is the Octoplier level. Because if I want to multiply something by 8, what I can do is I can take a value and then I can double it and then I can double it and then I can double it again. And so if I double this 3 times over, I take 1 and I double it, that's 2, I double it, I got 4, I double it again, I've got 8. Lo and behold, what do you know, I've multiplied a value by 8. So all, that's why I set this up ahead of time to set this EAX, because all I have to do is just add EAX to EAX to double it. That gets 2x. Add EAX to EAX to triple it. Add EAX to EAX to octuple it. And then add from EAX, add EBX. That's it. This should do it. 20 and 7 should get me 167. And lo and behold, what do you know? And so on top of all that, I don't need any extra pushes and pops because the EAX register, every single operation only modified the EAX register. 
So this will take any value. This will double it. This will make it four times. This will make it eight times. And this gets me 8x plus c. So, I mean, that is much better. And you're like, well, what about a loop of three? And they go, it is much simpler. Your, 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 the, the processor, your program runs much more efficiently with just three plain old straight up add statements for this as opposed to a loop structure, set ECX, push and pop ECX, all those extra things you saw in the previous example. Three adds just gets the job done. It just does it. And it's and fast and easy, you know, and less to think about. And just put a comment in here, you know, so... This gets me 2x, this gets me 4x, this gets me 8x, this gets me 8x plus c, done. So, so let's, see, let's see if we get this all on one page for everybody. So there's the end result of everything pretty much. There we go. Oops. But that, that pretty much covers this example. Um, I'm hoping you got the second part of this, but if you, you know, whatever you do to get the job done, you know, it's good enough for entry level assembly language programming. So, uh, thanks for sticking out with me. Uh, stick with me. I'll have some more videos coming in the next weeks, next time. Thanks again. See you around.